So maybe we should start there in terms of the adaptation process from book to script. How did you, where did you begin? How did you begin? Um, thank you. Yeah, no, it's interesting still. <laughs> We're still in the yeah. movie. We want to talk, we want to talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you'll have to watch it again now because in this moment, actually, Lily Bando, who plays Annie, is singing a beautiful song. So oh. <laughs> I'm sort of slightly. But um, will drive us back to watch on Netflix, <laughs> which is good. Um, how did the process start? Um, so I read the book about um, ten years ago, okay. uh, and was very, you know, just incredibly moved by it and uh, inspired by it. Inspired by William Kamkwamba, his his journey uh, and what he achieved uh, and the extraordinary circumstances that he found himself in and also the way in which he spoke about it in, in, in the book that he, um, that he uh, wrote with Brian Miller, who co-authored it. And uh, so there was just a very rich, textured, authentic base there for the story. So I was immediately intrigued to try to start a process of optioning the book and then you know, writing writing a draft of it. Um, I guess for me, the question was, how do I, what do I center the story in, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, uh, because obviously there are all of these wider <coughs> dynamics at play, but I felt that I wanted to try and center the story in, in, in this family and, yeah. uh, and, um, and really see if we could go down the rabbit hole and really explore these very interpersonal dynamics with fathers and sons and husbands, wives, and the children, the daughter, and, and that sense of a, 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 a very sort of nuclear family in a way <coughs> with Tia Mika, the baby, um, uh, going through this process, what that would mean for, for a family uh, in a way that we could all engage and Mm. and immediately identify. I mean, I think the thing that's interesting is for sure there's that at the heart, and we'll come back to, especially the father-son um, dynamic in the film, but I actually think what's really, what enriches the film is the context, that the depth of context that you give it. So we understand the politics, we understand the seasonal um, reality of living in that part of the world. You know, we understand the cultural history. You begin with the, the um, procession, the funeral procession. So actually, I feel like I'm very rooted in Malawi through the film. And that's often the bit that you can miss when films are being told, when someone who doesn't live in a place can often miss those kind of details. So was that something that you were hoping to do with the way that you... Yeah, I first it? went to Malawi, so about a, a year after I read the book. Mm. Uh, so I'd written a first draft and sort of put it together just based on the book, and then I went to meet William Kamkwamba in, in Malawi. Mm. Uh, and he was incredibly generous with me and just took me around to all of the places. I met Agnes and Triwell and the rest of the extended family. I was in Wimbe. Um, and uh, just traveling around to all of the uh, actual locations. Mm. Uh, went to the school, sat in on the classes, did the whole kind of process, and just tried to find my way into this, into this place. And, um, uh, and I started to just to get very excited about it, you know, just about Malawi, about the culture, about the Gule Wamkulu, um, you know, and Kulu is the other cultural dances, right, and, the, yeah. and they're very much at the heart of the cultural life of Malawi. They're a secret society of dancers, incredibly difficult to kind of meet. And so it was a kind of frustrating process of going back and forth and trying to sit with the Gudewe Mkulu and eventually being invited to a village where they were going to perform. And that being, for me, the moment where I fully, you know, I just you know, slipped down the rabbit hole into this experience, into this love of this, of this place and mm. understanding that it shared some similarities with villages in Nigeria that I had been exposed to all of my life, but um, was very distinct in that sense of it not being there being there being no generic African experience, and so wanting yeah. to also have a very specific and detailed relationship with Malawi, with Chichewa, the language of Malawi, and yeah. and so that and and wanting to then shoot there to shoot specifically in Malawi but then also to shoot the film on the locations where everything happened, uh, yeah. in, in his secondary school, in Wimbe High Street, in the Admark Center where the grain reserves are. That's exactly where William went to to get the grain for his family on that occasion. And so yeah. all of these um, 
these uh, details I was, uh, and even his house, I would have shot in his house if he hadn't done so much innovation that <laughs> it looked completely like different <laughs> than it was in 2001. So we, sh we shot next door. Um, we couldn't shoot in certain directions because his windmills were still up and that wasn't the part of the story when, the, you know, that sort of thing. Wow. And so wanting to just be right inside the experience and to, and to have it be as authentic and, uh, and as rich in, in the detail of Malawi as it, as it could be. That's what it is. That's what makes the film for me. That I, I, didn't, under, I didn't know that before right. this. It's actually quite good just watching the film and talking about it, actually, not doing the research, too much research. But... Um, <laughs> because that's what I felt in the film. I think there's lots of films that have been set in Africa and they have a very you know, dramatic story and then the backdrop, but you often feel that it, could, it feels like it could be shot on a back lot or something, yeah. whereas that's definitely not the feeling I got, I got from the film. Um, so tell us about the amazing Maxwell Simba. Uh, what a performance. Yeah. And it's first time. First time, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so Alexa Fogel, who's an incredible casting director, um, you know, came on board uh, to, to, uh, onto the film and uh, was immediately sort of working with context that she had in uh, Kenya and in Malawi, South Africa, um, Europe, America, and was sending me tapes of people. Um, you know, she really narrowed it down. You know, they'd gone into schools, they just met anybody who was uh, excited about acting, and, you know, uh, and so she started to send me tapes and uh, in this very sort of you know, short list, really, of people that she really you know, had connected with mm. uh, was Maxwell. And, uh, and I, when I first watched Maxwell's tape, I, didn't, I couldn't quite understand you know, what he was doing. I didn't, I didn't really... I couldn't quite believe that anybody who hadn't had film experience mm. before... You know, it took me a long mm. time you know, <laughs> to work out how <laughs> to be it, sort yeah. of minimalist and to yeah. express emotions in yeah. that way and how yeah. things can be read on camera and, yes. and just very, those kind of very sophisticated choices that can be made for an actor. So I, didn't, I couldn't quite understand it initially. So I, I could see that it was really strong, but I thought maybe that there was, maybe he was exhausted or something right, happened yeah, and he wasn't, yeah. I didn't know. So I went, so I flew to Nairobi to do, to workshop with him um, so that we could, uh, so I could just f find out, you know, what was going on. And, um, you know, he's just a brilliant actor. He's very, uh, he's very intelligent, uh, intellectually smart, you know, but he's also got this uh, wonderful emotional intelligence yeah. that he can really genuinely communicate and uh, and understands how to do very little and and to, uh, to put that across. And so I improvised with him. I was sort of trying to throw him in my own way and you know act with him and all that stuff. But you know he was just yeah. uh, he was fantastic. So it was yeah. very clear that we'd found the person yeah. that uh, would play William. I think there's something very interesting about East Africa actually because I think in terms of African cinema, not that we've seen much of it here, but we we often get a sense of what's been happening in West Africa, Ghana, and Nigeria. And there's a very that, that comes from a different tradition. It's very theatrical. So there's a very kind, if you think about Nollywood as the most extreme example, there's a very performative. <laughs> yeah. And it's quite interesting, I think, I think there's a real hotbed of talent on the, on the East Coast of people who, you know, I, I, you know, even when you see Queen of Katwai or what's been coming out of Kenya, there's a real sensitivity and understanding somehow of the big screen. I don't know. Yeah, you I should mean. should do that again. You should go there again. Yeah, for sure. No, no <laughs> yeah. I mean, that certainly was the case with, um, with, with Maxwell. And I just think, um, you know, to find somebody who can carry a film in that way and, and to carry it That's with awesome. almost sort of, and you know, the perception being sort of almost effortlessly carry a film, it's an incredibly difficult thing to do, you yes. know. Um, and so, um, you know, I just think he, he's absolutely remarkable. So. So you end up writing it, you end up directing it, you end up starring in it, which wasn't your in initial idea. Um, tell us a little bit about how you ended up coming to play Triwell, and then ask another question connected to that. Well, I mean, I, I, it, it had come up sort of very early in the process mm. that I could play Triwell, but I just felt that I was too young, you know, because I was, it was 10 years ago. <laughs> I was right. like in my early 30s and I thought, well, he's got two, you know, two teenage kids and I just thought, and I might be 32, but I look 25 and <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I was everyone like, no, <laughs> <laughs> you'll be fine. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I couldn't possibly do it. And then, you know, I, I didn't, you know, so obviously as the years went on, mm. I moved further and further into the sweet spot right. until, 
until it just made sort of sense. And I just felt like it was impossible for me to, in a way, you know, cast somebody and with that knowledge that, um, that, I had, that, I'd, that I'd written it and that I was directing it and then I was casting somebody of a similar age to me to then talk about choices that I probably would have been making, it just didn't seem yes. like it would be a workable yeah. thing. So it then became kind of clear that I'd, that I'd play Trywell. So let's park the film for a second and go back to you in terms of your ambition to write and direct and how long that's been with you and... Um, um, and yeah, what, what was that process, that transition like? How intimidating was it to go to, you know, suddenly it's, it's all about you, you know, you're helming the whole thing. So tell us a little bit about how, when did you harbor these desires to do Well, it? I'd always been interested in directing and writing, you know, but the, uh, and so I'd made a couple of short films and, uh, and done that, and I'd written a script that I hadn't really pursued developing in any way, but... Um, was curious about the process and about, you know, just um, about writing. And so I, um, but I hadn't, it didn't really galvanize until I read the book. Right. Uh, uh, and there was just so many thematic relevances for me mm. um, that I felt very, very passionate and very inspired to, um, to start to pursue it in a kind of slightly more formal way mm. and to, uh, to write. And then, and then directing came on top of that because suddenly I was writing it with and going back and forth to Malawi, but then writing it with the kind of visual language of what I wanted to create in the story, what kind of film I wanted to, to make. And so then those became very directorial choices mm. uh, that were even in the choices in the script. And so it sort of became inevitable that that was um, what I was going to do with it as well. And this is my last question, because I know you guys are dying. I have so many more. But w which was? When you say direct, the directorial choices I want to make, what, what were they at the time? What were you thinking? Well, I think I wanted to try and create what... The only way I sort of describe it is, you know, that sort of... You know, it's how I felt when I first saw the Gule Wankulu later on, you know, is this kind of teleportation experience. I just wanted oh. to see if I could create constructed in a way that an that an audience might just sort of feel like they were there mm. <laughs> you know that they mm. kind of they enter into that space at a certain point and they're part of this community mm. and some of that obviously with the choices of location of how to shoot it but then also with like um the way that I was writing it in terms of tying Wimbe High Street together and the bicycle coming down and, you know, um, so that uh, Mike Kajagunda comes through there, but Triwell, we've just seen Triwell coming in from the farmer's world and, they, uh, and the two women are in the mill house and we're tying in this sort of high street in Wimbe and we are starting to understand the geography of this place to the point whereby we can then slightly forget about it because yeah. we're familiar now and we're starting to enter a kind of uh, an understanding and the audience is learning a lot about landscape, about geography without necessarily um, pointing it all out. And, and um, yeah. you know, so those kind of dynamics, you know, I just felt were choices that I was making because of films that I'd seen that I had loved, that had played with geography in that way, like McCabe and Mrs. Miller, okay. where by the end yeah. of the film, yeah. you sort of could, say where the church is and how you walk down and you know yes. and so I felt like that kind of immersive experience cinematically yeah. in a place like Wimbe could be very strong yeah. for um for kind of creating a real understanding yes. of space yes. so I guess that's what I mean that, yes. I, that there were choices that I was making in the writing of it that reflected directorial choices I mean, and so it, it became one yeah. thing ultimately. I think there's something and then I will so over to you, so think of some very good questions. Um, but I think the thing that I, I, I think the way that, yes, you succeeded, I suppose is what I'm trying to say, because <laughs> I think what I, what I really liked about it, there's, there's often sometimes people talk about universality in cinema, which I'm always not sure about, because I want to be specific. I mm. want to be specifically in a world. And I think you created a world that was so specific, I felt like I knew it very well. So I think, yeah. That's a great question. I, I mean, I think Malawi is um, an incredibly beautiful place, you know. Um, I think that that is one of the things that, you know, obviously Malawi is known as being the kind of, and thought of as the heart of Africa. So that's the kind of cliched idea of Malawi. But what you really engage with when you're there is, is why, you know, why people, why there's a certain 
warmth and connection, you know, why this story is a specific story for that place, you know, why, uh, how Malawi in that exact kind of context of extraordinary pressure and difficulty can produce this kind of diamond, you know, and through that, you know, with William Kamkwamba and his experience, produce this sort of, a kind of quiet revolution in the way that we can perceive places that are involved in this kind in these kinds of dynamics that we can re-understand um, I think certainly a continent but then actually much wider than that you know um, a, a great deal about ourselves and our sense of community through somebody like William Kamkwamba and I feel like that kind of dynamic is generated only in certain places especially if a country or a space is going through that level of pressure and certainly if families are going through that level of pressure without completely breaking apart into just, yeah. uh, into just chaos, yeah. you know, which would have been the expectation really. But actually something else happened, something wonderful happened. And I feel, I strongly feel that there aren't many countries in the world that could sustain that kind of dynamic and produce somebody like William Kamkwamba, you know. So Malawi to me is a very, very powerful, very, um, very special, very beautiful place. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just a, I think that's part of this conversation about point of view. You know, that's part of the conversation, I think, about diversity, you know. Um, obviously, from my background and spending a lot of times not in Malawi, but in Nigeria and, and having a quite, a, and there are, like I've said, you know, huge differences between Malawi and, and Nigeria, but there are some similarities, you know. And so, and, and those similarities produce over years of going back and forth to, Nigeria, an understanding, a shorthand, understanding the dynamics, the family dynamics, and so being inside of that experience, and this is what this film is supposed to represent, you know. We are used to seeing images of maybe even images of famine that are from the outside, and you know, what is a famine like if I look at a famine and think about it, and it's devastating, it's very sad. But also, what is a famine like from inside that experience is not something that people often, you know, from a Western perspective, have access to. And so um, I think that that is the onus of filmmakers now, is to try and see how they can get underneath the hood or behind the curtain and really try and tell um, some stories from inside the perspective. I think that is, um, that is the charge and the challenge of being part of both communities, is that you actually understand the sort of film and cultural language here uh, and the cinematic language, and this is a very Western cinematic language, but you also understand the cultural language from other places, and that's uh, and finding that balance can actually, um, hopefully, deliver another level of rewarding and, and, and culturally rich and diverse storytelling. And also, the, the wonderful thing about the film, now I'm pro having time to process it, is the fact that you do get the sense of agency that often you, those images of famine is people being helpless, but you don't actually see all of the things they've tried to do to stop that happening or to save themselves. And I think that's what your film does wonderfully, actually. You know, I, I felt like that the, you know, I was always very, uh, it was a, 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 you know, a big point of stress for me, obviously, was gonna go into this idea of like, how was I gonna direct myself and direct everybody else? and be in it and perform it and then, you know, how would that all work? And I didn't really know how that was uh, gonna work. Um, I just knew that I was gonna try it and we were gonna see, you know, on a sort of daily basis. And, and I had an incredible team of people around me to, to help with that process, you know. Incredible producers, Andrea Calderwood and uh, Gail Egan. Um, <laughs> and yes, uh, yes. Uh, you know, Valer uh, Valerio Benelli, our editor, was out in Malawi with me, um, so we were able to discuss things, you know, on a daily basis after we'd shoot. Obviously, Dick Pope was there as a cinematographer. Tule Peak uh, was the first person I brought over from, um, br from Brazil, um, you know, to do the production design because I had loved the film he did, City of God, and I'd loved mm -hmm. the way that that had had that quality of epic cinema, um, you know, essence, but also very authentic and detailed, and mm -hmm. so... Um, so having a group of people around that I really trusted and who were also just terrific, you know, um, was, was very helpful. And then in the process of doing all of that, you know, something unexpected happened, which I hadn't predicted, which was that um, 
that it clarified the dynamic of the relationship between myself and Maxwell in a way that it wouldn't have, uh, in a way that wouldn't have happened had I not made the decision to direct it and play Triwell. In that, mm -hmm. I could be Triwell as the father and the son and the director and the actor, and it just and it allowed us to form a bond uh, that was, uh, I just don't think would have been as available had there been a third party mm -hmm. who was also the you know who was directing. So. Um, so that was something that happened as a result of those choices, which I think really strengthened the film and strengthened the core relationship and the dynamic. But um, um, and that allowed me to have the kind of confidence, as well as with everybody else, you know, just that sense that this is actually the way to pursue it, and was correct mm. for this for this film for this choice. You know, Brilliant. great. Um, yeah, they thought that I sounded like a little northern. Actually, <laughs> there was something that came up. You know. I was speaking to Peter, who was uh, assisting me on the film, and he was saying, I think the accent is good, it's just that you sound like you're just a bit northern, you know, from the north of Lake Malawi. I was like, there's not much I can do about it. I'm going <laughs> to live with it. I'm going to live with it. If I'm in the country, I'm happy. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, the next, sort of, this is the next big challenge for the film, in a way, is that, obviously, you know, being, putting the uh, film on the platform on Netflix is very, very exciting for us all, you know, because it really has this capacity then to reach a lot of people in a lot of different countries uh, and, and to have a lot of impact. And I think there's a lot of positive impact that a film like this can have, you know. I think it can have that in the West. I think it can have that here, but I think that, you know, you could just exponentially times in places that are under any kind of pressure and seeing William Camcomba's story represented in this way, I think can have a, a massive positive impact. But, you know, the question for us is going to be trying to find a way to push that beyond the length of a broadband, you know, because that also then becomes the next point of difficulty. It's no longer like theatres. It's like, how do you get to people to see the film who maybe don't have access to high-speed internet and so on? So that's where we are right now, you know, trying to work out, not just having, which we are also trying to organise, like a screening in... Um, you know, Malawi and a screening in Nairobi, but uh, how we move beyond that and, and we're enlisting the help of things like the African Leadership Academy to try and see which is where um, William Kamkwamba went to school in, in, uh, in Johannesburg and also where Maxwell has got into school. <laughs> so he's going to go there in September. Uh, and so we've been working with them pretty closely and so we're going to try and find ways that the student body and the alumni body can then move out into their own communities and show the film in certain ways. So that's the plan, and it's a kind of growing plan, um, but that's definitely our desire to keep on sort of, uh, you know, exposing William's story as much as we can. There's definitely a need for a, some kind of um, exhibition network across the country. So maybe you can ask William to see if you can rustle, rustle something, something up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. yeah. <laughs> He's got something up his sleeve. Uh, no, no, we had, I mean, you know, I think that the balance that we were always trying to strike with the film is to, is to know that there has, there has never been, up until this now point, a, a, a film of this size, uh, this kind of scale, in Malawi. So, obviously, going into the process, we were aware that there were going to be, quite, uh, you know, some, ch some challenges to do with that, you know. Um, some of the sort of infrastructural challenges um, that we'd have. There was, there's no, there's no sort of film department per se in Malawi. There's a tourist department, so that sort of does both jobs. And then, um, but we were, it was very clear that we were going to have to move a lot of equipment, you know, across borders from Nairobi, um, from Kenya, from South Africa. Um, and all of those logistics, that kind of logistical sense of it, uh, the timings of that with a very tight shooting schedule and all of those things. And so there, were, there was equipment that didn't arrive when we needed it. There were things that we had to improvise. There were scaffolds we had to build instead of cranes, all these sorts of things that, you know, weren't, uh, were, were complicated and, uh, and had to be sort of improvised around. And that's where, you know, somebody, having somebody with the experience and the depth of experience and, uh, and calm nerve of, of Dick Pope is just invaluable, you know, and, um, and that capacity to take some of that pressure off me and, uh, and, um, and take it on himself to try and sort of figure these things out was really great. So the challenges were 
the logistics, I think. That's the, that was the key challenge. But, and that was a challenge we knew we'd have. But in balance, you know, what we got from being there was a, a, the real sort of sense of you know, a wind to our backs and, and a real capacity as, as the community began to really support the film and support this, um, this telling of, of William's story. Um, you know, I think it just allowed us to really um, sort of set sail with the film uh, in a way that I don't think would have been possible in any other place in Johannesburg, you know, doubling or, or Kenya doubling. So, um, so that was the thing. That was the biggest challenge. But in, in the end, it gave us so much more than we could have ever, you know, hoped for. So, um, so that, was, that, that was a wonderful thing. This, this film really is a tribute to, um, to the country, to Malawi and, and the people of Malawi. Thank you, thank you. I think um, that's a really great place to end. And you know, like I said, there's a million and one other questions. It's a fascinating, not just a fascinating story, an incredible story, but I think in terms of your telling of it, I think it opens up so many questions about the, the art, the importance, the possibility of filmmaking. So thank you so much for taking such a complex project as your first debut. Um, but I think it really does uh, show the test of your metal in a way. I think in all of those, in the writing and the directing space. So we're dying to see what you've got up your sleeve for your next one. So do, we hope you'll come back and bring, sure, share yeah. that with us. That'd be fantastic. You've been fantastic, but thank you so much to Chiratel. Okay.